is, is in terrible straits. It proves change. Even, even dictators for 40 years can be thrown out. You're insignificant versus you are crucial to the existence. The very existence of the universe depends not only on you, but on the smallest speck of you, as proven by the Eucadian model. One person has no effect versus the most powerful effect begins with one. You will never get our permission. And we just said this. Versus, we don't need your permission. We don't need your permission. They say, you have everything to lose and threaten that. Versus the fact, you've never owned anything in the first place. You've just rented it. You've just used it. They say... We can kill you and your society in an instant and it's over. Versus the fact you can't kill an idea unless you have a bigger and better idea. They say you have everything to fear versus the fact that fear nothing and you have nothing to fear. So let's go through some of these because... These are things that they constantly throw at us and even though we might step forward a few times when we get hit on the head by them, it's very easy to go back into old habits. So let's start with the first. You are mortal, they say, versus you are immortal. Now I know a number of you got uh, into the debate of rules of matter, what comes first, rules of matter and, and all of that. But if you read the journey of UCA, if you read the Canons of natural law, they're in the canons. Then you will see a fundamental premise of Eukadia from the very beginning is life is a dream, but the dream has rules. Awareness loves life. We are part of the unique collective awareness, and yet we exist in form within the dream. Everything around us is a dream. Now, Eukadia is not the first time this was raised. Plato speaks of it, the Brahmins speak of it, the Maori speak of it, the Polynesians speak of it, the African tribes speak of it, the indigenous uh, Indian tribes of North and South America and Central America speak of it. Everybody knew that life was a dream. The Celts, the Druids spoke of it. Life is a dream. And if life is a dream... And the real us is dream, is spirit. And what we're living in is, uh, is the dream. Then we're already immortal. We are already immortal. The essence of who and what we are is immortal. And what we are doing in an extraordinary experience is that we are seeing the universe, the dream, from the perspective that this is the reality of a collective dream. The only thing that's mortal is this vessel, is this body. You are already and have always been immortal. That's why when we talk about the ending of hell and the uni unity of heaven, I know that people get hung up because they're brought up in different customs and I respect those customs. I respect the history. I was brought up in, in a Christian history where you know you have two sides, good and evil, two teams, one's wearing blue or white and one's wearing red or blood, you know, fight each other on the on the on the team and then then God's kind of like a sort of semi interested uh, umpire. Well, not only are you immortal, but no one can take you and put you anywhere you don't want to be. So it's time to end the deliberate misinformation and the deliberate misdirection that is about tricking us to believe. Magic is 90% belief, 90%. All the voodoo rituals and sacrificing of chickens and running around and rattling whatever they do, at the end of the day, 
the vast majority, and I'm sorry if that sounds like I'm disrespecting Voodoo, I'm not disrespecting Voodoo, I just take that as an example, that ritual in religion, by far, has its power in reinforcing belief. And belief is the key influence. If you believe they can take your soul, then you will obey according to that belief. If you believe they can hurt you, then of course they can hurt you. But make no mistake, you are immortal. Now, I the next one is you only live once versus um, you have almost certainly lived many generations. If you're listening to this, then almost certainly you have lived more than once. I used to be the most vocal critic of reincarnation. I was brought up uh, in a Catholic background and reincarnation is considered abhorrent to the Catholic faith and the Abra uh, Abrahamic faiths. Until I did uh, a exercise in determining how many flesh vessels have lived in the last 10,000 years. And I did that because we were identifying the membership of one heaven. And to my amazement, when I did it, I thought there would be 20 billion, 30 billion. To my amazement, when you actually do it in a proper actuarial style of births, deaths, and living, and go through the generations from 10,000 BCE, the number cannot be less than 100 billion. It just can't be. 100 billion flesh vessels have lived and died. Many died at birth. Many died before birth. Many died as a child. Many died young. Now, one thing Eukadia has taught me is that the universe abhors, it hates waste. And the waste it hates more than anything else is knowledge. So I ask you, if there has been over 100 billion, and it's probably closer to 120, 130 billion flesh vessels for just the last 10,000 years, do you honestly think that every one of them had one shot, and if they didn't get born, that they blew it? If they didn't live to 10, they blew it? And that the knowledge was, was returned back to the source, and that was it? That's a bit like saying you only get one car in your life. If you crash it, that's it. See you later. Makes no sense. If, if your car is in an accident and you're not badly injured and you can still drive and you can afford to or you're insured or whatever mechanism allows you to, then you can go get a new car if that's what you want to do. If you're immortal and you are already immortal, it makes perfect sense. Now, both these concepts, that life is a dream and reincarnation, were intrinsic beliefs, fundamental beliefs, thousands of years ago. And they were considered universal beliefs. They weren't the beliefs of some weird sect, some weird cult, some minor group. These were majority beliefs. Just as majority of people might believe that uh, in Christmas or whatever, more people at the time believed in these concepts. Well, why did they disappear? Well, it's very hard to control spirits if they know they're spirits. It's very hard to control people if they know they're immortal and they are on a path of reincarnation. Of all the fears, the strongest fear is fear of death, particularly if you're taught that you only live once. And that's what they do. They threaten us with a whole range of fears based on the premise that this is your one and only shot, and if you're blown it, that's it. See you later, that's it. And it's worked. 
it's worked an absolute treat for them for at least a couple of thousand years promoting the concept that you are mortal you live only once um, and there is no reincarnation well that's that's sort of another control point you need to learn versus uh, you just need to remember they reckon that over 80 percent of our DNA and they say this openly on the genome project the vast majority of our DNA they call junk that's what they call it it's a, a medical term junk DNA now I, I ask you a, a very serious and logical question if the most valuable thing in nature is knowledge and the most brilliantly designed storage of knowledge in nature is DNA do you honestly believe that nature would put 80% rubbish in DNA and go to the extent of, uh, of faithfully recording it? I mean, it's absolutely absurd. It's just another example, not just of, of ignorance, but willful ignorance. You see, if, if DNA does in fact store knowledge beyond just the function of, of the genes, the mapping of the genes, and the mapping of certain uh, immune elements, if there is a connection between the microtubules and the positioning of microtubules from a zero or one point, and microtubules are in the cytoskeleton and the framework of every cell of your body, they are the most abundant protein in every cell of your body. These microtubules arrange themselves into a binary computer and the DNA in vast majority form chooses not to record how to make a gene and the codons and the creation of those but merely is there to record the positioning of microtubules and the arrangement in the cytoskeleton of microtubules then in your DNA is more knowledge than you could ever possibly learn in one lifetime in you already locked away silent asleep and when they say that we are asleep boy they literally mean it you are living and we are living our lives largely in a coma now I'm a great believer that that what happens when you start to have knowledge provided to you that is aligned to nature aligned to our immortal selves aligned to the universe and not deliberately misdirected and and twisted and contorted of which so much almost I have to say almost all of their knowledge is it acts as a key to unlock what you've always known and that's the exciting thing of Eucadia you're not learning Eucadia you're remembering Eucadia now another one they say to us and they say this over and over again and when you're suffering from loss of money loss of job loss of family loss of children loss of health and they say to you you're insignificant you're nothing you go and look at the journey of UCA and you look at how we describe the construction of matter when you get to the level of atoms in Eucadia I have prepared a thing called the hydrohelio atomic matrix as an alternative to the periodic table and when you put the periodic table and I suggest you go and do it go and have a look go and get a copy of the periodic table go and get the hydrohelo matrix look at the measurements of mass the measurement of mass in the hydrohelo atomic table of matter built from the concept that life is a dream and that matter is awareness in motion has a zero error rate compared to the measures of mass it explains why mass is mass when Einstein allegedly said e equals mc squared in to describe the enormous energy contained in 
very small structures. He couldn't explain why. He didn't explain the why. He just explained.